Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Sovereign Society podcast. This is actually really funny because like, (laughs) uh, this is going to be like a conversation, like an every night conversation I have. So like you guys are really getting like the VIP treatment of what it's like, like in my house, because I have my best friend here, Krista Ryerson of Charles Grove. And like, I got really embarrassed the other day because she like put me on blast on Instagram. Like she had this like, the list of like, oh yeah, so uh, essentially like this is like, this is our conversations. Like, wow, like I was just my name, like, right? Like my whole name. Missed call, call back, missed call, call back. I was, <laughs> and she still has me a shamanessa Gadessa in her phone, which is hilarious. I don't have the heart to change it. I just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, and we're wearing black, which is like, the rep, like being being very rebellious in Kundalini, because you know Kundalini is all white. But you know, I was like, she's like, oh my god, we're in the black club, like we're wearing black tonight. And I'm like, yeah, we're yinning it out. You know, yin is that black energy, that black of the of the duality with the white as being the yang. And I know both of us have been feeling like embracing the shadow and the light in a way because we need to honor like what we're feeling and what we're going through and I know if there's anyone in the world that has like helped me it's this woman like I call her crying when I have like breakthroughs or like crazy downloads or like I need to vent like this is literally like my soul sister and my best friend so I'm so excited that you guys get to have this and she's been a guest before right so last time we recorded this she was at my house and we were gonna try to do one last time you were here when we went to Tucson Gem Fair together, but I was having like the most insane Kundalini activations. Yeah. It was impossible. Like <laughs> I I couldn't even stand for like five minutes without having to go in child's pose, having like Kundalini activation after Kundalini activation. So I'm like, okay, like the time will come for us to have another episode and we're both feeling like what's going on collectively, you know? And, uh, it's just nice that I have like my, my soul squad is what I call them. Cause like I have men in there too. So it's more than just my soul sisters. It's like my soul squad that I can like have these conversations about like the, the piercing of the veil and actually the dismantling of the veil that's happening right now. And to really bring truth to what it is to quote unquote be spiritual. I feel like very JP Spears, right? Like, like (laughs) what it means to be spiritual, because I just think like there's been a lot of pressure on what it looks like, right? Like in social media, the good vibes only. That's what I talk about when everyone's like, what's possible? Like, what do you talk about? You're talking about toxic positivity. It's like, Oh, good vibes only. But sometimes you're, you're in it and you're feeling like shit. And then if you're seeing like all this, like, Good vibes only. It's actually detrimental to the process of you healing and transmuting and assimilating what you're actually going through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's running rampant right now. And I think it, it makes sense because when the pendulum swings so far one way, it usually swings so far the other way. And, And right now at this point in history, it does feel like we're coming a little bit more swinging back to that center space right where we are in um, understanding where we are in more compassion even for the parts of us that are light and that are dark so i think it's perfect that we're wearing black today i don't think it was by mistake that (laughs) (laughs) we We did not plan this okay No, no no and and that's the thing it's like like what it means to be spiritual is more than just like promoting and marketing like a good vibes only like hey here's my like here's why what I'm selling it's also like the connection you know and I think we for we forget that too it's just like remembering that we are spiritual beings having a human experience yeah and part of that human experience can be challenging you know there are times especially in those growth periods yeah yeah, it's designed to be tough uh, during the. That's how, unfortunately, many of us learn, right? And and it's not at the top of our mountain that we have all of the development. It's usually in those in those valleys. And I think a lot of spiritual teachers, and there's so many now, 
they're popping up all over the place. They want to sell you happiness because we want to be happy. Why do we want to be happy? Because it feels good. And there's nothing wrong with feeling good or being happy. That's important. That's paramount. That's actually our birthright as human beings to be able to align to joy. But there's even research that suggests that we cannot align to our highest joy if we don't allow ourselves to go through the deepest darkness because you can't have one without the other that's why we incarnate in in a lot of ways is to have this polarity this contrast experience so that when we do get handed this different experience we can be so much more grateful for it because we've seen its opposition and beyond that within kundalini yoga and the ten bodies the beauty actually lives in recognizing that neither one of those things create, make, or break your happiness, right? It doesn't matter what the external experience is that's happening. What matters is, is how do you find your own place of peace within whatever circumstance you find yourself in? And so it's really important, especially in this time, in this age, where things are getting intense. Like this is what Yogi Bhajan, who brought Kundalini to the West in 1969, he predicted was that these times were going to challenge us. They were going to crunch us in a lot of ways. And we needed to have resilience. We needed to have a nervous system in a very pragmatic way that was very strong so that the secretion of our glandular system could be at its highest so that we are balanced human beings, that we can live more readily out of this neutral meditative mind. Now that being said, I just want to say too, even within the Kundalini Yoga tradition, I have to call out the fact that there still is this, okay, but this is how you should feel and if you're doing this posture and if you're doing this and that these are the ways you should feel it it isn't necessarily a purity of the teachings but it's a way that it's been conveyed by the humans that are bringing it forward and i would have to say that doesn't align with the work that i do right now because when i went through another initiation process over the last two years i was doing kundalini every day i was immersed in a 40-day practice and it did not make me feel like okay i'm happy now sure when i was on my mat i felt connected to the energy that's generating organizing and destroying but then the moment i got off my mat there was all of this residue that i had to wade through and i just had to love i I cannot stress enough that at this time, it's about compassion. Like, can you have compassion for yourself no matter what, mm-hmm. period? Mic drop. And it's true. I know, I can contest this woman has been very devoted to her Kundalini practice because she'd call yeah. me just being like, I just did, like, she's doing like a 40 day, she's waking up at like, the Amulet Vela at like 4.30 in the morning and chanting 5.30. 5.30. Yeah, still, within the, still within there. Still within there. It's 4.30 my time. So I, in, my, in my world, you're still blessing up. But like this woman's chanting for 62 minutes every day right now. Well, and also keep in mind, I live in Canada. So 5.30, the sun isn't coming up even at 6.30. Like it's getting dark here now. So <laughs> I am still catching that time. But for sure, according to Kundalini standards, it's a sleep in. Um, But it's the first time I've ever done it and I'm chanting for 62 minutes and I'm doing that with such intention. And I was telling many of my clients this on a live call the other day, I'm doing it for me, for sure. But I'm doing it to be a better person for them. I'm doing it because of the work that I want to be able to bring into the world. And I know the power of the mind and it can take you into darkness and you can stay there. Now there's a difference between between being taken into darkness and staying there and becoming addicted to it and having emotions surface to clear. How do you know what the difference is? Because I can tell that that's gonna be a question. You have, to, you have to develop an inner voice. You have to develop that neutral meditative mind. The best way to do that is through meditation. And what is meditation, right? That's a, that's a very moving question for a lot of people. It's very subjective. <laughs> and it doesn't have a definitive answer. So people say meditation is presence, right? Like being present to the moment. Some people think that it means stillness. Some people believe meditation is an absence of mind, 
right? And I think it can be all of those things. For me at this state, meditation is when I'm connected in presence. That to me is meditation right now. That's been a moving thing for me because meditation is shifting. Um, it's a shifting thing because as we shift, it shifts. And so for me right now, meditation is finding the connection to the unified field of oneness through being present to what is. Why? Because in neuroscience, being present to what is means you're co-creating with your consciousness. But if you are not present in the moment, if you're on autopilot, you're running off of a program that was recorded between the ages of zero to seven, and that program is dictating your life. And most people were not raised with parents that were highly conscious because there wasn't the consciousness on the planet at that time that there is now. So it's really important to be able to be present so that we can start creating this better future, right? And the future isn't somewhere in the distance, it is right now. And so this is why I'm taking on this practice because I know that it's what's being asked of me to be a better leader in, in my community and for the world at large, quite frankly, because there's only one of us here. And that's why the mantra here is cultivating a conscious tomorrow today. Yes right? Having these conversations and sharing these stories and speaking truth of like, hey, there's ebbs and flow in life. Hey, you know, like not everything is all unicorns and rainbows all the time. And that's okay. And that's the biggest thing I know Chris and I are both really passionate about having you guys really embrace is that like, if you're in it right now, like it's okay if you need to cry. <laughs> if you're in it, it's okay if you're just like going within. The most important thing is to not escape it. Yeah. Yeah. The escapism is part of the, what's happening collectively. I'm seeing it in my own community because I work a lot with psychedelics and I'm seeing how people are abusing plant medicines to escape. It's so it's been that way for a long time and we don't have, and like, we can't be escaping what's coming up because then it's just going to continue to, to grow. And then we're going to have even more problems down the line. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to have a really strong support system around you and to have a really strong community to help you get through it right? Because the lone wolf days are over. Like we don't have to do this journey alone anymore. And part of not having to do that journey alone anymore is also about you embracing that like you, God, spirit, universe is also with you. Yeah. Yeah. And very important too, because many people who are going through uh, darkness right now are being really crunched by what feels like um, a non-loving universe, right, is usually feeling like they don't have people. And so I know because I've, I've definitely gone through it, I know already I can hear people hearing, or hearing you say, make sure you have community. And then the thought being like, but I don't have anyone. I'm mm -hmm. totally alone. And then it's one more thing to feel shitty about, right? And so if, if you find yourself in, to, in that space, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but somebody needs to hear this right now. Just know that connecting inward is so important and then find someone you can connect with, whether that's a hotline you call, you don't have to know the person, right? But just a meetup group that you that you participate in. Maybe it's you reconnecting with your mother if you haven't been speaking as long as there's healthy and loving boundaries in place and codependency isn't an issue, something that's gonna create you know, more toxicity within yourself. So just know that if you feel totally and utterly alone, uh, that's normal. And if you feel like you have no one, definitely do your best to reach out, especially if you feel like you don't want to be here anymore and you're making a plan. But more than anything, it's really important to know that it's like incredibly normal to feel utterly and completely alone when you're on this path going through the dark part. And most of the time, those people that feel alone are the strongest ones. Oh, yeah. You know, because yeah. those, I mean, I can contest that with my whole fucking heart and soul, like feeling so alone and so lonely. And I know I'm a strong ass bitch. Like I know that. And sometimes it's like, mm -hmm. oh, like 
does anyone understand what the fuck I'm going through? Like, it's like, I feel it all in my head and then I can get into that spiral and then it's like, stop, I catch myself, stop, breathe, feel into it, journal, move my body, go in nature, like cuddle with bud, like, what what do they eat (laughs) sometimes eat you know like we drink water like you know it's sometimes they're just like malnourished in that way too and you know and it's just like it takes practice to snap out and to catch yourself Mm -hmm. i just know for me before i was doing deeper into the business development and the marketing strategy and the branding strategy work I was doing trauma work and I kind of walked away from it for a while, but I'm still like, I feel like I'm being pulled back into helping with trauma work because it's so prevalent right now in this collective. Yeah. It's what people definitely need. And that's not to say people don't need to start businesses. There are people that we need them to right on this planet, but wherever you go, there you are. So if you have a neuroses around avoiding your patterns, avoiding the darkness within of sweeping it under the rug, it's going to be really easy for you to jump into a business and dedicate all your time to that, which I see everywhere in the spiritual community. And then that becomes your new neuroses and you're still not dealing with your shit, right? And it sounds like I'm calling out the spiritual community. And I am a little bit. I am because there are, I see very often what is called this toxic positivity. So what is toxic positivity? Like you were saying at the beginning, it's this false light template. It's this idea that we have to be okay all the time. It's even the idea we have to be productive all the time. And guess where it, it, it stems from? Guess what it spirals out of? It, it's a spawn of the patriarchy, of the paradigm that already currently exists. And spirituality, I thought was going to make it out of it, but unfortunately it hasn't. It's still stuck in three-dimensional, whitewashing, toxic positive doing behavior and enough why do you think our we have a climate crisis this is what it stems from because the climate this is our earth mother this is this is feminine energy feminine all that means by nature is being how much how many of us are afraid to just be to sit with to hold to nurture our pain our wounds our trauma our inner children right? Like this is, this is systemic and it's an epidemic. It's, it's systemic of the culture that we currently live in because we're lacking this sense of compassion. I'm going to keep coming back to this word because it feels like the most important word of the time right now. You know, I, I was crying about this the other day because I watched Greta Thunberg's video on climate change. I watched it probably 12 times and I cried every single time. And I had a girlfriend recently uh, who's living in Australia ask me, well, what are you doing about climate change? And I, a great question. I thought about it. And, you know, I personally do things about climate change, like the way that I shop, the way that I consume food or don't consume food, i.e. meat products and all of that, factory farming, like this conversation could get so deep. But what I was really considering within my own business is like, The way that I'm contributing is by helping people unplug from this matrix and step into a place of surrender of being exactly where they are. Because guess what? If someone says to you, you're not expanded enough, or you are out of the vortex, or you are not thinking positive enough, or your thoughts create all of your reality, or go on and on and on, well, what does that say? It says you have to do something to get out of it to be okay. The very premise of doing something to get out of it, to be okay, is masculine in nature. Now, there's nothing wrong with masculinity. It's one of the most beautiful energies there is, the same as feminine, because in its totality, it's everything. But it's still suggesting that we have to plug into this paradigm of doing. And don't get me wrong. It's more dogma. Yeah. There are days where, yes, running stairs, pushing yourself, that's exactly what you need. But, and here's a really important piece. 
if we've lost you, come back to this moment. The important piece is when you create space to be in, in feminine energy, you will become inspired. You will become a magnet to do, to do the thing you need to do. So you might be sitting in meditation, in silence and stillness, walking meditation, whatever it is, and then you get the download, I need to move my fucking body. Okay, then awesome, get up and move. But it's the beingness that causes inspiration for the masculine energy to do something. It can't happen any other way. It is the feminine that always inspires the masculine to move. But we're in a culture where that is not the case. We're in a culture that says push, do, um, have become the external markers of success like your friendships, your status, your income, your house, your cars, da 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 da, da. That's what makes you successful. It's the spiritual and so, materialism. Yeah. And it's great. You can totally have great things. We all, oh. want, we all want nice things, of course. This is not about that. I don't believe in taking a uh, oath to poverty in order to be spiritual. I don't think that creation wants that for you either. Mm -hmm. We just want to make that clear. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we have no problem with nice things. Oh, it's no. <laughs> yeah. Especially, well, oh man, when we were in Tucson together, I was just like, stop me from keep buying like great crystals to bless up my house as we both, I'm like, oh, I got like my crystal here and, and there's night and we like nice things. We both like luxury, you know, yeah. like without a doubt. The, the thing is, is that like, even if you are a spiritual teacher in, in, in a way, it's like material doesn't have to be just like things like in your home and stuff too. It can also be a toxicity of like a title, right? Or like some kind of fame in a way too. Like what is your purpose for doing the work that you're doing? Like what, right. what is the transformation you're focused on? That's the first thing that you need to prioritize is like what is the transformation that you are contributing to for the collective? And then in that you will receive abundance because it's all about how are we here to serve? Well, and, and then people are like, well, I don't know how to serve or how do I know what to do to be of service? It's, it's, it's so simple. The most profound things are what causes you to lose sleep? What has, what has been your challenging moments? Whatever you are overcoming personally in your life is your permission slip to help others do the same thing. Because what you are currently facing, whatever you face, you are a match for that mountain. And so we can get really caught up as a collective. It's like, oh, well, I see this, you know, IG influencer living their best life, traveling the world, and I want that. Meanwhile, I'm over here with my 200 followers trying to make a difference. No one's paying attention, living in comparison, which is the thief of our joy, right? Without recognizing that, like, well, okay, what is it I truly want? I want to I wanna be big, right? We all want to be big because we are big. That's where that comes from. It's this understanding and recognition that you, what you are attracted to in another, their light, is a mere reflection of your own inherent worth. You were born worthy infinitely. And if you don't think so, put a baby in your arms. You know, take a look at a sleeping child. You were that sleeping child once. And I, I wrote this poem years ago that had something to do with the line, like, how dare, how dare we not love ourselves? Your mother spent countless hours staring at your face, thinking how perfect it was, right? It is such a, a misnomer. It is such a disservice to, and I'm guilty. I'm super guilty as well, but to look in the mirror and think, not good enough like that is a disservice to your mother all of the time that she spent pouring her unconditional love into your heart into everything about you you were perfect down to every single nano crystal that exists in your body and you do have nano crystals that's a real thing so how dare us how dare we not love ourselves that much it is our obligation to do so because of that and the only thing that makes us think otherwise is because of the way that the world shows up for us. So whatever your darkness feels like becomes your deepest medicine. 
The darkness becomes your teacher. You let it guide you. You let it become your ally. You make friends with it. And you have compassion for yourself as you do that. And then you, you, you move in service to the light after that. And that's part of the initiation process that comes through from the dark night of the soul. And they say that we're, we are the dark night of the soul generation. Oh, I haven't heard that. Mm-hmm. Because like we're, we're the generation that's clearing the ancestral karma. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> right now what's happening for those of you, my, you know, HSPs out there, which is probably most people who listen to this podcast, highly sensitive people, we are clearing lifetimes and lineages of trauma right now. I'm going to say that again. We are clearing lifetimes and lineages of trauma. And I love good alliteration. So the double L's in there will help you remember that. That is what is happening without a shadow of a doubt. How do I know that? Because I have been going through it just like you. And there are so many people pretending that everything is business as usual, but I know that behind the curtains, they're, they're going through that if they're sensitive at all, because that is what's being asked of us right now. And so I wanted to create something for people that actually address the fact that, you know what, it has been intense. And even if it hasn't been intense for you right now, and you've been in a season of, of spring and summer, bless you, because you're holding that frequency because your winter will come. But winter is a blessing. It is a blessing when the leaves fall off and all that is left is a retreat and a moving of energy from the external to the internal and tapping deep into the soil and, and laying down deep roots so that we can align with the truth of what we are, right? And the truth of what we are really can be um, excavated during that time so that when spring returns, and it will, it is sure to happen because that's the nature of things. I get that even we all me. have cycles, you know, it's like, and we have to, we have to address and honor our seasons because as I said the other day on a couple of weeks ago on a Real Talk Thursday, your trials are your greatest teachers. Yeah. 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 They are. Those trials are the opportunities for you to see how fucking strong you are. Those are your opportunities to see how magnificent you are because you are getting through this shit once and for all. Mm -hmm. I Those thing there because yeah. there's something really valuable about what you just said. And then I want to tack on a piece around, you know, you're strong enough to go through it. Well, you know, and I know that when you're in your shit, the thought that often comes up is, I don't wanna be strong enough to go through this. This is so fucking hard. Why have you put this on me? I can't actually make it through. Even though your higher self is like, ha ha, yes you can. I laugh because I called Crystal on Monday saying this shit. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm done. I'm so fucking done with this. Like I'd rather just be gone. You know, I said that to her, and then I was like, I know that's well, not I'm true. That because like I feel that more people are gonna feel that way moving forward that they don't want to be here. That it's too hard. This is why we need tools. We need a tool belt. We need people in our lives that have gone through it that are a couple steps ahead that can really help to, to be a lighthouse for us. It doesn't mean that they're better. It doesn't mean that they're more spiritually evolved. It just means that they are the ones that can see around the bend when you can't see that yet, right? It, it goes so back. It goes back to the ancient knowings of storytelling. And this is what community thrived with was storytelling. Right. Yeah. The oral tradition. Yeah. And, and you know what, that actually brings up another point because it brings up the point of the power of vibration and of sound, which is why I'm, I'm chanting these mantras every day because sound is what's located in what's called the 10th body in Kundalini or the 11th rather, which is all of the bodies together. So the, the 11th body, body, 
Yeah, it's, it, it, is, it is sound current. And so, so circling back around again to talking about not wanting to be here and feeling like it's too heavy for you and you want an escape route, I want to I want to share a little bit of a story of, of something that happened to me last year where I was in that space. I was in that space even though I had a 40 day practice. I practiced almost every single day in 2018 for 40 day after 40 day after 40 day. And then in 2019, same thing. I, I missed a few days and then I, I hopped back on. But in 2018, even though I was doing that, I had a moment where I, I legit was like, I don't think I can handle anymore. I think I'm tapped out. And I got this incredible download. And what happened was I was gifted from my higher self this, this knowing that the reason it hurt so bad and that I was put in the position I was in where my vibration was so low that I was tuning into the frequency of every single person on the planet in a similar state was so I could have compassion for it. I could understand it deeper. And I could get to a place of recognizing that our life intrinsically matters. I saw so clearly that the moment of our birth creates a stamp on the planet. And when you are born, the, more, the moment that you land earth side, it's like a beam of light in all direction shoots out into the grid. There are grids on the planet, around the planet. We can't see them, some people can. Some people on psychedelics actually will say that they can see this grid. And these grids are changing all the time and they're shifting and some of them for are for our highest good and some aren't. And so the way that I saw it in my mind's eye was that on the moment of my birth, on the moment of your birth, whoever you are listening to this, you shoot out this energy in all directions and you stamp this planet with that energy. And then within the arc line, within the um, radiant body, within the um, electromagnetic field of your own body, your being here is sending out signals all the time that fucking matter. And you have contracts in place with people where you're going to meet them and you are going to influence them in one way or the other. And I saw so clearly then that if I was to take my own life, that I would be doing such a disservice for the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that my life is affecting every single day. And that's, that's true that. everyone. Mm -hmm. That's true I'm, for everyone. That's what I think about when I'm in those really challenging spaces because I'm in it, you know, and I have a history of depression. I have a history of calling suicide hotlines and that's, the thing that keeps me going when I'm in it. And I'm just saying this in full transparency because I want you all to know, like, we see you, we understand what can happen. And I'm, and it's, I, what Krista just said is what keeps me from not doing that is that not only am I going to be affecting the whole planet if I leave, Mm -hmm. on like when I'm not supposed like you know if I take my own life it's not our, yeah, it's not our I would be affecting everyone whose lives I've touched my family my friends my teachers and that is just heartbreaking to me in itself because I love them so much that I would never uh I would never want to hurt them in that way because they believed in me when I they believed in me when I had a hard time believing in myself. And those were the people that inspired me to keep going and inspired me to heal and shared with me the, like my truth in a way of like, you have such big work to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you're in those low moments, just like the best way to get through it is to remember the, the love and the compassion that surrounds you, even when you think you don't have it or you don't see it. Yeah. And that's the thing too. Like there are guides and angels and our council members with us all of the time that are trying to help uh, guide us along the path. And, and that's another important piece. And something I really struggled with for a long time was asking for help. 
to just be like, I need your help. Because here's the thing, you're gonna be hit with a metaphor or a two by four. And most people are pretty dense right now on this planet. And I don't mean dense like stupid, I mean dense like the weight of, of being human becomes so heavy that we need these life shattering circumstances to happen in order to actually get to our knees and pray rather than on our own will being like, I want to make a, a friend out of my suffering. I want to make a friend out of these energies around me that are supporting me. I know that the universe and that my highest self, whatever you believe in, even in this darkness, this is a loving and benevolent act to, to push me further into alignment to my purpose here. Now, if you would have asked me while I was deep in it two years ago, and Sabrina knows, like, if I was like, this is going to be part of my path, no. In, in fact, I had some shame around it because I was like, I've been doing this work for so long. How could this possibly be happening to me again? And I knew it was happening for me and I knew all the kitsch phrases and I knew all the logistics of it, but I couldn't feel it in the cells of my body. I couldn't feel it. And so what did I do when there was nothing left to do? I just was present to my breath because your prana is one of the most powerful tools that you can tap into. So you're tapping into that love energy, you're tapping in, you're in that moment of darkness, you don't know what you're gonna do. Maybe you're even contemplating not being here, right? And you, you tune into that love and you try to come back to your breath. And just really place your hands on your heart and think about the value of your life and how much you've brought to people's life and know that your suffering has context. It was gifted to you so you can be of service to other people, but it requires that you go through it and that you don't give up. Because on the other side of that, I promise you with every cell of my being, there is something you can't even imagine yet. You can't. And I used to say to people when they would tell me that, no, that's not true. I, of course I can imagine it. I imagine the best life for myself. So of course I can. But I honestly think th the joke that my highest self and I have now is it's like, it literally stripped me of everything. It stripped me of everything because now when anything lands on my plate, I have never been so grateful. I have never been so grateful. And so now I see that things are going to line up for me that I actually couldn't imagine otherwise if I was still in that place. I had to burn the old life down. I had it's to. The tower, like the straight up, that yeah. is the tower. <laughs> yeah. It's the death card. It's the tower. It's a little bit of joker energy too. Like it's, it's definitely... It's, and, and these cards get so much slack for being negative. Oop, don't want to pull that card. Oh, there it is again, whitewashing. Oh, don't want to feel this experience. Oh, there it is again, whitewashing. I am sorry. But everything we see systemically with the way we even treat each other with equality between men and women and races and class systems and the LGBTQIA community all has to do with this. It is all fucking connected. The reason we cannot stand other people's differences is because we cannot hold space within our own consciousness for the totality of our human experience. And it's bullshit. It's bullshit. I'm super done with it because this is why we even have a president in place who's getting impeached, but in place who is really drawing out this sickness that lives within us. He was literally that, uh, that magnet that we needed to draw forth how sick of a collective. We Otherwise have. we would have been continued to spiritually bypass what's happening. Right. It was just like, yeah. like there, it was just another opportunity to just like, as you said, business as usual. Yeah. It, to anesthetize ourselves to, completely um put on the laughing gas and laugh that oh my god hillary's in in presidency we have a woman gray female power that's what would have happened and we all would have been walking around pretending like it's fine 
not facing the grit of the truth of the human experience that is that we still have so much fucking shit to clear. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Acknowledge that, but you came here for it because you were incarnated at a time where that is what is being asked of us. And you know what? At the truth of it is, it is love and light at its core. It is. But if you, if you jump to that state before we go through the rest, you're doing a massive disservice for the earth because yes, you have the ability to create. Yes, you have the ability to step into 5D. Yes, you can transcend your wounds and your trauma like that. But when you are a highly sensitive person on this planet right now and you are feeling that everyone is going through these stages, to jump there and to just take all those people with you is impossible. The people who are teaching from a strictly 5D space, I have a lot of respect for, you know that, we work in that realm all the time. We love that realm. However, that is for a specific group of people. It will not help the people who need to kind of go through those stages first. And I'm not saying my work is never gonna jump into that realm, but what I know with every cell of my being is that I needed to work in a different realm at this time in a 3D reality to pull people into 5D consciousness through my own shadow first. And so I had to go into the deepest wound I had, which was abandonment. And it's not a personal wound, it's a collective wound. Because the moment we incarnate, the massive first trauma we have is feeling that we're separate from source. Mike, fucking drop. Getting yeah. heated over here because I'm a fire sign and <laughs> I just, we all want to feel like we are connected to something bigger and greater and more whole. But guess what? We came on planet Earth to re remember that, but also to go through the grit. And can you find beauty no matter where you are? When I got to a space where I could literally cry tears fall into the empty chasm, the deep dive, where you literally feel like there's no bottom, and I could just be there and actually see beauty in it, that's when I knew something had shifted for me on a level that I couldn't even comprehend. I could find beauty in my tears. I could find beauty in the pain. This is not becoming addicted. We have a culture also that really magnifies and, um, gives accolades to people who stay in their suffering too. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when winter comes and when autumn and winter are there. The only time it, it turns really problematic is when spring is trying to knock at your door and you're refusing it, right? Is when summer's really trying to go into bloom and you won't have any of it because you're stuck in a neural programming that says you don't deserve that. And then if we get into the neural aspect of it, if we get into the epigenetics of the whole thing or the neuroscience of it, when you've been in a season of winter long enough, you can become addicted to the neurochemicals that are moving through the body the most, right? So this is why it's imperative of the time of winter to have a spiritual practice. It's imperative to keep you grounded on the path and to keep the neurons shifting. Now, I want to make this really simple for all of you listening. If you're like, oh, I, I can't meditate or I don't know how to do this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna offer one piece of advice that is massive to get things shifting for you. Start doing things just a little different in your everyday. If you brush your hand with, if you brush your hand, if you brush your teeth with your right hand, brush your teeth with the left. If you drive home to work, this, if you drive to and from work the same way every single day, take a new route right? If you sleep on the same side of the bed and you and your partner have like solidified that, switch it up. These small acts are a spiritual practice and they absolutely start to change the way that the neurons fire in your brain, which will create new neural networks and new neural nets means that old neural pathways have to die. And another way for those of you who are a little bit more advanced on the path or further along when you're in your meditations, don't be shy to call on your guides, your spirit, your council members, and to say out loud or internally, any neural connections in my brain that aren't serving me, I now ask that they be released. I want to activate within my cells right now the highest timeline, the highest activation 
a grid where I am in alignment and flow to my highest purpose. And I want now, I ask of you in the highest loving kindness and compassion for myself and for this planet to have my neurons fire and wire in a way that is of service to this body to be of service to the planet. Talk to your body. I cannot stress this enough. Make make friends with your physical body. But the thing is, is, we don't just have a physical body, right? In Kundalini Yoga, I mean, Sabrina and I know this, this was one of the elements of Kundalini that really resonated with me. It's the number one thing for me. Like, right? And, and just like any, right, like just like anything in life, listen to this podcast, you take what resonates, you leave the rest. But for me, when I was in teacher training and I heard about the 10 bodies, I let that filtrate down into my belief system and I was like, Damn, that feels right. So here's another piece of information that I hope blows your socks off because it certainly did mine. We think we have one physical body, right? We have three mental bodies as well as six energetic bodies. The physical body that you've been gifted with is the temple for your soul to find expression. And it takes 8.4 million incarnations to get a physical body. 8.4 million incarnations constitutes one light year. It takes 100,000 light years to get a physical body that's possible of self-realization, actualization. So the fact that you're even listening to this podcast, that you've been guided here, that your energy aligned with this message, that your frequency allowed your pineal gland, because it's very pragmatic also, to attune yourself to this message and you haven't turned it off yet, is proof that you have lived that long to, to me in my belief system. And the fact that you've lived that many lives, I want you to think about that, like take a deep breath with that because that's what you're clearing. 8.4 times 1,000 light years. That's a lot. That is a lot. And it is a gift that you are here and it is so beautiful and you are so needed. So if you're there's a to purpose to why you're here. Totally. Yes. Because you yeah. bring something to the table no one else has seen yet. Totally. Your experiences, your passions, your quirks, your challenges, your truth has never been experienced before. This is why it's time for each of us to stop playing small. It's time for each of us to embrace all facets of who we are so that we can be in that space of totality, so that we can be in that space of pure compassion, so that we can be in that space of authentic radiance because you bring something that has never been experienced before. And that is takes you honoring what has brought you to this very fucking breath right here, right now, without shame, without judgment, with total understanding that this is happening for the purpose to help this planet evolve. Yeah. And if there is shame and if there is judgment, because that can come up, you love the one who judges. It's not really you anyway. It's just a program in the mind. You love the one who has shame because it's not really you anyway. It's, it's a, a condition. Yeah. So it, it's possible. And it's so important to know that even if you're like, okay, I got to play big. I keep hearing, don't play small. What does that mean? You know what? Sometimes playing big means sitting in the contraction because guess how rebirth happens? Guess how you even got here? Contraction. Your mother had to go through so much physical fucking pain so that you could land earthside. And there's a metaphor in there. When you allow yourself to go through contraction, this is not all about expansion. I, that's one of my favorite words. And yet expansion is a byproduct of contraction. So we have to have contraction to, in order to have expansion. And playing big 
sometimes you got to play small first to realize that that playground doesn't fit you anymore, right? So you love the one who played small too. <laughs> That's where you embrace all, all of it, all yeah. the whole journey. And the faster you allow yourself to embrace the journey that has brought you here, the faster you become embodied because it's that understanding and that recognition. Yeah. The recognition of what has been to what is becoming. And that becoming process is a birthing process. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a fairly well-known writer on Instagram. Her name is Danielle. I can't remember her last name in this moment. I am her tribe, I believe she used to go by. Uh, and she has this line in one of her poems that says, I am a season of becoming, right? And I really love that because it allows us to see that A, there are seasons to life and B, everything is an unfurling process. Right. Oh, Danielle Doby, that's her name, Danielle Doby. And poetry is such a language of my heart. Again, it's a sound current. It's a, it is, it is the archetypal energy of Venus, right? It's, it's this love energy. And so when we hear these things, they can sound like kitsch phrases, but it's like, that is medicine for the soul to, to recognize that you're in a season of becoming, that you, every moment that you can bloom where you are planted. And it's possible here in your moment of suffering, in the thing you've named your suffering, that there is a gift hidden for you within it. But you have to be present to unwrap that gift. If you're not present, you can't receive the present, right? So all of this is just to say, the experience of being human is one of the most challenging and beautiful experiences they, there is. And so knowing that this too shall pass, then you can actually be where you are at rather than trying to rush your healing. Because if you rush your healing, it's fine. You're not being judged. There's not a man in the sky who's like writing down notes in my opinion. But what will happen is that your high self came here to learn those lessons. And if you aren't taking that time and space to heal, well, you're gonna have to go through that again. And again, it's a loving and benevolent act, even though it doesn't feel like it. And that's what happened to me because when I went through my Saturn return, abandonment issues came up massive and I did the best I could at the time, but I didn't have the bandwidth to process it in the way that meant I didn't have to go through it again. And so seven years later when Saturn came back through my chart, guess what? And the reason I'm telling you this is because learn from my mistakes, right? Like take the time. I don't wish that upon anyone because seven years later, when you've been knee deep, eyeball deep, even in the work and you, the same lesson comes back up. A very common thought is I failed. I've done this wrong. I can't believe I have to learn this lesson again, but from the vantage point of your higher self, that's not what's going on. It's saying we're looking for depth and width here. And that depth is what's been missing in the community. Yes. That is what we are rallying to just Revolt. shine. <laughs> well, and it's not even like a fighting. It's, it's more of like. It's an awareness. Just, it's an education yeah. and it's an awareness through from, from pure compassion and pure pure love that we want you to understand that there's something in that depth. Yeah. yeah. You will learn things about yourself in hardship that you will not learn anywhere else. So let it, let it be a teacher. Let it be your greatest friend. And I promise the medicine that you can extract from that time is plentiful. 
And then from that bounty, you can feast, you can eat. It can sustain you, even if it feels like it can't. It will. But it takes patience and time if you're brand new to the process. And there's resources like the Sovereign Society podcast to help you. There's resources like Krista has an offering right now called Alchemy that is navigating you through the 10 bodies to come into total embodiment. Yeah. Yeah. So Alchemy is so dear to my heart. It's a course that I created over the last little while. It was a compilation of self downloaded into my consciousness when I was going through this initiation process again. And when I listen to that, I still cry because it's such potent medicine. So alchemy is about taking these parts of life that hurt you and it's about turning them into gold. That's what the alchemist does. The alchemist is also a archetype that lives in the sixth chakra, which also correlates to the arc line. And so the arc line, interestingly enough, is about where integration happens. The arc line knows no time and space, and it's about making peace with your light and your dark, right? Because it's moving through all of time and space that you've ever been incarnated. It's where the destiny is written, and it's a powerful place where we connect to others. And also an area that needs cleansing, right? Because we can, especially as women in the body of a woman, the gender of a woman, we have a second arc line that pulls in even more. So nipple to nipple, nipple to nipple. Yeah. Free the nipple. So (laughs) the reason I, I created this course was because I wanted to be able to offer people a resource who are really going through something, but really allow them to navigate that space through the 10 bodies. So there's Kundalini yoga meditations for each one of the bodies, as well as a piece of poetry that I have hand selected that aligns with the 10th or with one of those bodies in some way or another. So after you do the meditation and you clear the residue of your past in the arc line, you can lie down in Shavasana, you could sit up in meditation and you listen to a soundscape that I've recorded of my voice that will guide you into a little bit of information about the body and then into the poem. And we use, I use a, I say we because my highest self helped create this with all of my council members. But we guide you into hypnosis techniques so that you can actually bring this down into your subconscious. So there's a very practical side to this. Anyone who's worked with me knows that I have a very practical side. It's my Taurus moon. It's very rooted on the earth. I have an earth trine actually. And within that, I, I want to give those tools that help it land in your subconscious. And then there's a piece for reflection a piece for you to just contemplate. And then there are journal questions afterwards that are open-ended questions for you to just go deeper into your psyche. That is my, my deepest wish because it's my deepest wish for myself is to continue to unearth and move through the layers of my human psyche of all the lives I've ever lived. From the time I was a very young girl, I've seen my death. I've seen at least six of my deaths in dreams already. So that's why this information for me feels very real reincarnation because I've, I've had visceral experiences of it. And so this course is going to help clear. It's very needed at this time. I have never created something that I felt is more necessary for the moment that we are in. And so I have priced it accordingly so that it can get into the hands of as many people as possible. My goal with this course wasn't how many zeros can I crunch out of it? It was how many people, how many hearts, how many souls can I affect? And so that is really, really the mission. And and I feel incredibly emotional about it because my deepest desire is that it helps people all over the planet who went through even an iota of what I went through over the past two years. And on the other side of it, there is so much hope. But in the third body, the positive mind, when it's out of balance, we feel hopelessness. And that is one of which the Which is this year as well, which is it's why it's been so strong this year, because it's a three-year 
And I, I talked about that with the episode with Remington a couple of weeks ago. This is a three year where we're building and through that hopelessness, we build our courage, yeah. Yeah. which is third chakra, like solar plexus. Like we're building the courage through that hopelessness to get through it. So we can experience the light at the end of the tunnel, which is the four year, the neutral mind, which is what we're going into next year. 2020. The crystal vision. Yeah. I've been saying this for weeks now. If you are an avid listener of this podcast, I've been saying all year because this is, I've been patient for fucking 2020. We are diving into crystal vision. And to get that crystal vision, we have to pierce through the veil and dismantle it once and for all. And what is a mask? Crystal vision, right? Like, like even you saying that, I feel is so in alignment with the fact that this crystal energy is going to upgrade our cells at a very deep level, where people are going to be stepping into the understanding of neutrality. People think, oh, being neutral is boring, or who wants to take the middle ground? Like, you need to stand for something, or you'll fall for anything. That's not what we're talking about when it comes to neutrality. We're talking about the container. The neutral mind is the balance between the projective mind and the protective mind. So it is the container where all of life exists. You are the witness, the one watching, you aren't attaching to such things. You just let it unfold. You count it all as joy. And you have discernment yeah. for the situations that are happening outside of you. And that is your opportunity to reclaim your sovereignty. Yeah. Because yeah. this is your life. You get to say what, oh, like what is, controlling and i say this in air quotes what is controlling you right and the fact is is that you have the power to control what's happening by where are you put in your energy mm -hmm. where is your belief if you are in a place where you can't even sit upright to meditate because you're crying heaving on the floor uh been there you you just turn <laughs> the mantra to go with, with, with this one you literally, there are things you can do where you don't have to like, you just turn on mantra and do anything you can to, to align yourself to the frequency of truth. There's a difference. I say this all the time. There's a difference between what's real and what's true. What's real is that you might be consumed by darkness, lower energy, lower vibratory fields, lower not meaning a hierarchical state of less than or worse than, lower just meaning it's a continuum, right? It's a polarity, it's the other side of the coin, but it's the coin we're talking about when we talk about the neutral mind, it's the whole damn coin. But when you're on the other side of it, you can get really, really stuck and caught up in that energy and then it can take you under. So you just do whatever you can to elevate yourself. And I don't say that in a place like you're not good enough, you need to elevate yourself. It's like, no, you are good enough. You're perfect as you are, but you need to get honest, radically honest about the structures you've put in place that are maybe keeping you on the other side of the coin rather than being the container of the whole coin itself. The belief systems, the behaviors, the actions, yeah. the habits. Yeah. And that radical honesty, again, takes courage. It does. It, it takes, to get radically honest with yourself takes courage, but that radical honesty allows the shift to happen, to start implementing. Because mm -hmm. that's you saying, enough. Yeah. I'm ready to shake to, shit up. If you want to build that courage, you got to build the radiant body. And you can build the radiant body by working on the arc line. You can build the radiant body by working with the physical. You can work with any of the bodies and build the radiant body. Because really, we need to be able to have a strong electromagnetic field and a strong radiant body to have courage, to be noble, to, to feel the fear and show up anyway, right? And, and so this is why working with the 10 bodies is life-changing. Because you can contextualize now what's going on for you in a whole new way. The 10 bodies in the lower triangle are the two teachings of Kundalini Yoga that have drastically changed my life. 
that lower triangle consists of the lower three chakras, which represents our physical reality, which is the source of the trauma and the pain. Because if all of that is blocked, you can't live from the heart space. No. If you can't live from the heart space, you definitely don't have a bridge to the higher realms of consciousness. It's no. It works in both directions. Mm -hmm. And the upper three chakras represent your spiritual reality. Which Some is people are living there. People are just stuck there because they're living like surface level life without having the courage to do the depth and the deep work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the deep work is the reward. Yeah. That journey is the reward. And the 10 bodies, that was the very first class I ever taught was awakening the 10 bodies. Yeah, yeah, lots of people, for sure. I actually just taught it for the first week. I had never taught it before. Wow. And I mean, it was one of my favorite classes to do. I just had never taught it, and uh, I did, and I loved it. It was beautiful. It's, it's, this practice alone is, is potent for the times. It's, it, people are ready. We're ready. Enough is enough. I know that you've been feeling it. I feel that you've been feeling it. And so... You choose your sovereignty. It is your birthright. You are noble. You are radiant. You are wise. You are sanctioned. And you are worthy of being here, deserving. And we need you. We absolutely need you. There are so many people on the other side of you getting better that rely on you. And that might sound heavy, but it's not. It's the contract. It's the way it's supposed to go. And if you, if you do leave this life by your own hands, in the Kundalini tradition, it's believed that you're, you have to, you're reincarnated and then you, you go have to deal with that life all over again. And for some people, we are clearing that right now. We're clearing other lives where we have taken our life. That's why it can feel so intense. But even having that awareness can, can ease the process to be like, okay, yes, I'm clearing all of this stuff and I'm going to be present to it this time around because I'm not doing this again like this. Lifetimes and lineages are being cleared. Be gentle with yourself. So gentle. Compassion, compassion. I have a tattooed on me. Compassion. <laughs> Without suffering, there would be no compassion. So this is, in, go ahead. It's in one of the poems within, within the course. It says, all great teachers and leaders have held hands with those who suffer and have undergone immense and profound suffering themselves. It's the connection. The opposite of addiction is connection. And people are craving connection more than ever before. You've been hearing it episode after episode after episode after episode of all these people that I've been bringing on to share with you all. Yeah. The truth that this is a time where we are craving connection. And that connection has to first start within ourselves, the connection to our pain, the connection to the traumas, the connection to the doubt, all of those dense things we have to connect to it to infuse compassion yeah. to share empathy to ourselves a hundred percent yeah it's a, and, it's a potent time and it's asking a lot of us and we absolutely can do this we can we're so, doing it yeah if you're a part if you're part of my homies here like if you are an avid listener to the podcast and follow me on social media or whatever, you know that this is what I've been talking about lately. Yeah. Yeah. And Krista is one of those women in my life that I can call and have a conversation with and they, they know, they see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a no judgment space, especially once you've gone through something like what I've gone through and what many before me and will after me have gone through this deep 
initiation into higher levels of awareness, you can't, you can't judge anymore because of what you've been through. You're the last person to condemn, criticize, belittle, betray, because you've been through it. You can't. And that's a powerful force to be reckoned with. Because then when you see someone on the street and your mind used to go to judging them, you will bless them. You will bless them because you know. Mm -hmm. You will bless them because you can feel the heartbeat on the planet that is hurting. And that's how we start to heal the planet. It really like, climate change is a, is a real thing. It's and elemental. Yeah. And guess what we are? Elemental. Yeah. So this is the time for you to embrace the elements of you, which are also connected to the seasons of you the facets of you in its totality. No more shaming where you've been. It's not going to help. Embrace if it is coming up, embrace it, make peace with it, Move feel on. into it, because that's the only way you are going to transmute it and assimilate it and become that alchemist. Mm -hmm. Because there's something really cool that happens when we take this moment, the moment to feel it. What we're reliving that experience in a way. Quantumly. Quantumly, we are, right? I mean, if if the end result of an experience is an emotion and you're living by the same emotions every single day, Joe Dispenza talks about this, then your body's living in in the same experience, or at least it thinks it's living in the same experience every day, right? And so it's forgive yourself if you're there. It's okay. But take the time because the trauma that happened to you, you probably were too young or too whatever you fill in the blank to actually process it at the time. So take the time now and process it because the alchemization that happens is that there's presence doused with love. Darkness can't live there. It's the guru. It's bringing the darkness into the light. You Loving are, and you are the guru you've been waiting for. It's not outside of you. It is you. Precisely. Yes. And you feel into that. You allow it to unroot, up level, um, di dismantle, dislodge itself from yourself by being by the generosity of your awareness. And if it keeps coming up and keeps coming up, keep being present. And then eventually it does move. It has to. The Dalai Lama says sit with any emotion long enough and it will turn into joy. So you sit with it and you sit with it and you sit with it and you love yourself and you love yourself and you love yourself. And that, and as joy, many, and that joy comes also from seeing how fucking far you've, you've come. It's the highest emotion is joy. And you can be joyous when you see what demons of you of yours you've been able to conquer and when, and when we stop putting so much emphasis on the external markers of success there's that meme going around on instagram that's like i'm just over here you know healing generational trauma uprooting this doing that like all of these but society doesn't give you accolades for that right they give you accolades for getting a great job, for getting married or engaged, having a baby, all of the, well, what about rebirthing yourself? Like, I, I, I'm a firm believer we should start having baby showers for each other that just like <laughs> celebrate the rebirthing process because you've totally just gone through some massive initiation and you need to be celebrated. Like these and we, are we Geminis are having twins, so it's double. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> diamond it's many facets for sure of the human experience yeah I yeah you. this is why you're my best friend and I love you too. little one that like i'm telling you guys this is like a normal conversation of krista and myself on the phone yeah, yeah. we just recorded <laughs> we just like instead of us calling each other tonight to like sh shoot the shit like we're like okay it's podcast <laughs> yeah yeah. But we want you to know we see you. 
and you're not alone. And we know exactly what you're feeling. We are, we, 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 there's a connection here with us. If it's you listening by yourself with the three of us, if it's you listening with other people, it's all of us and all of us collectively hearing this. And this is a way that Chris and I are choosing to answer the call mm -hmm. because it's not spoken about enough in this community. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, personally started to become a spiritual teacher was for like this conversation exactly yeah same it wasn't for the instagram fame it wasn't for anything of that it was like my story being able to share my story so that other people who may be going through a similar situation can feel a little less lonely And that's all it takes, you know, if there's so much focus to affect millions of people, but if you change one person's life, which you have, that person's going to go out and influence two people who influences seven people who influences 12. You see how this works. You've already influenced over a million people. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I want to wrap up. What does sovereignty mean to you? Inner authority. Who's inspiring you right now? Jeff Brown. Why? He writes, he writes about grounded spirituality. He talks about this stuff. And he's really blazing the trail in a lot of ways. What would you say, not even to younger Krista, but two years ago, Krista? I've got to. Where can we find more about you and alchemy and Chalice Grove jewelry? I wear this, you guys, I wear this Mother Mary necklace. I've worn it every day since I got it. Krista was with me. <laughs> I've worn it every day since February. Yeah, my main, my main source that I spend a lot of time uh, sending information into is my email list. So you can go to at Chalice Grove and check me out on Instagram. There is a link there for Linktree that will connect you to so many different things. There are free meditations. There are free resources to just start to really sink in a little bit deeper. And Alchemy is listed there as well. Um, that is my number one spot is Instagram. You could also go to www.chalicegrove.com. Um, and those are my two main spots. Other than that, email is always fine too. You know, chalicegrove at gmail.com. I'm here to be of assistance and I know that you are too. So if stuff comes up for you from listening to this podcast, like we're here to support. Just know that you're not left hanging ever. It's why we do what we do. Yeah. And if there's anything else you want to share with whoever's listening. Hmm. I'm just going to take a breath. Maybe let's all take a breath together. And drink water. <laughs> and drink water. It's a similar message to the last time we did a podcast, but it's coming through so clearly again. And it's that you are, you are sanctioned, you are chosen, you belong here, and you are a match to your mountain. I love that. Thank you, my dear friend, for sharing your wisdom and your beautiful medicine. I love you so much. This is, this is my ultimate ride or die here, this woman. And we met on Instagram, mind you. We did, yes, we did. <laughs> oh, it seems like yesterday, but yeah. again, we're here for you. If you feel like you need help, there's plenty of resources. And please share with us what's moving you and what's coming through and 
truly check out Alchemy. She sent me her soundscapes and I've been pushing her for years to finally share her fucking poetry. I'm just waiting for the book now. Yeah. I'll get it through her sometime soon. But yeah. well, divine timing. Well, steps. Yeah, steps. The steps. But soon enough you'll see a New York Times bestseller of this woman's poems. So that's the vision I hold for this woman. And to all of you, we love you. We see you. You're so supported. And you have total permission to feel whatever arises. As Matt Kahn says, whatever arises, love that. We love you. We thank you. And take care of yourself. Drink lots of water. And know how supported you really are. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll chat with you soon. Take care. Is that love?